Boom. Conversation number three of creative marketing. Chris, what's going on, my man? Man, just living the entrepreneur dream, building my personal brand and building brands along with it. What's going on with you, Brady? Dude, getting getting after it this week. Getting after it. I have a four and a half day work week and it feels like I have a two day work week trying to get all my stuff done before I head out of town. So, you know how oh, it man. is. <laughs> dude definitely yeah that'll be me in a couple weeks so i feel you there but you know it's important just to keep going and continue to build this stuff as we go and not lose that momentum because momentum's so important on this journey no matter if you're a beginner no matter if you're five ten years into this no doubt no doubt and we have a good conversation today i'm very excited for this one i've been brainstorming it a lot actually we're gonna talk okay. personal branding dude yeah no i love this topic because and we were talking about this earlier this week too, in building all the brands that I've built and been a part of, I failed early at building my personal brand. And then these people that I've been watching, and we had a side conversation that we'll bring in on this, the people that I watched actually did a really awesome job of building their personal brand and they can apply their personal brand to all these other brands. And it is seriously the key on an entrepreneur's journey to have that personal branding. And a lot of the time we, we look so far forward and building brands to attach ourselves to when it's actually the the exact opposite. And it's like, build yourself as a person, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, and then apply it to everything that follows. And the thing is, I think, and this is something you and I probably underestimated at the beginning, and I think a lot of other people do as well, is they think your, their personal brand is such small scale. It's mm -hmm. not as important as growing businesses, but the reality is what do businesses consist of what makes mm -hmm. up a business it's people yeah and and, and your reputation is everything so yeah. if you're able to connect with people on a personal level that goes a long way well and so here's where i got confused early and this might be very um enlightening to people who are watching is you know for instance when we built a brand nobody knew who chris douglas was and nobody knew chris douglas was a videographer or a content creator or did any of this stuff because i was coming out of the nursing world so then i thought you know what? I need to build a brand that sounds like a production company. So Spencer and I built this thing called Akati Production, which was really cool because we created an SEO pocket. But like we we failed to create our own personal brands beyond that. So as soon as we like we're like, all right, we're going separate ways and you know, cutting Akati, there was nothing left. And it was like I had to scramble to create a personal brand. But then in the flip of that process, I remember looking at like Gymshark, for instance. Gymshark came out of nowhere in the fitness industry. They had they had Steve Cook. And then before that, Steve Cook had just built his personal brand. And if you look at that, it's like Steve Cook was able to help influence and grow this company because of who Steve Cook was. And it directly influenced the brand Gymshark. Yeah. I mean, the examples are everywhere. I mean, still mm -hmm. keeping it in the, the fitness, fitness world. Corey mm -hmm. Gregory, our guy Corey G. Yeah, with um, what's that? Max Effort Muscle. So he he switched from max muscle form to max effort, but because he had such a strong yeah. personal brand, he was able to carry it over and just like absolutely grew it like that. And it wasn't the size of muscle form because the marketing wasn't there at that corporate level, but still they were successful very quickly and still are. Very quickly. And guys like me followed him. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, same here. I personally bought things from muscle farm because of Corey Gregory. Once he exactly. left, I moved on. Yeah, and, and and it's crazy because that I mean that's an enormous company, but mm -hmm. still people connect with people more than people connecting with brands, and that's something sure. you always have to keep in mind. For sure, and that's where there's there's a thousand videographers, there's a thousand marketers, but each of us have our own experience that we bring and we we tailor it to our customers in a way that they want to continue to work with us. And at a point that we change direction or they change direction, that's when you see the split, and that's a conversation that we were having too of like. You know, this this customer is a little outdated for me. It's time to grow and I don't need to keep up with them anymore or they don't need to keep up with me or feel the need to. And that's like that growth and personal branding where you kind of, it's like, you know, snake shed layers. You got to, you got to peel back every now and then to continue to grow because the clients that you're helping, you might've met them at that level, but now your personal brand is growing. You know, they they could be a B level. I don't know any other way to say this. <laughs> it doesn't sound harsh, but they could be a B level and you just stepped up to an A level and you don't have to feel guilty about leaving them behind because that could actually crush your branding of where you're heading, you know? Yeah, it's all about one thing. Um, and I meant to kind of kick off this episode with this, actually. But I'm curious before I give my take, what single word do you think is most synonymous with personal branding? 
One word. Authenticity. That's a very good one. Very good one. My word is reputation. Ooh, dude. No, I love that too. And I, let's defend these real quick. I want to share why. Yeah. Authenticity. So in the in the sense of like who I am and my values, and even like the law of attraction and all that stuff, the more authentic you are to who you really are, people feel and they're attracted towards. And you can be the weirdest person who can hold a camera and do all this stuff, but you're going to find the people who attract you and help pull that out of you and expand it. And it's it's literally like the, the spiritual theme of life and business is like when you can tap into that, you can really help yourself expand and others expand as you're the truest version of yourself. And I think that's a big yeah. part of my journey is authenticity because there's been stuff that I've wanted to hide, but it's ended up making me a lot of money and helped me grow my business at different angles that other people can't. Yeah, no doubt. And I think our, our words are actually somewhat synonymous. So we're, we're definitely pretty close here. My thought with reputation is whether you realize it or not, your personal brand is out there. It's always evolving and you're developing reputation, whether you're trying to or not. So mm -hmm you need to be paying attention to it because if you're not focused on it and putting yourself out there in a good light, you're developing a negative reputation. Or if you're not putting anything out there, people are becoming indifferent, which is worse than anything. So mm -hmm. the reality is there's always a reputation about you forming. So you just have to be mindful of that to always uh, put your personal brand out there in a positive light and make it a good reputation. So what do you, what do you think your reputation is right now? Man, I, I think it's I think it's good for uh, some tight knit communities. Good. The, the challenge is expanding on that, and <laughs> and it's funny. I mean, you teed me up right to another topic. I, I really wanted to get on that relates here. My recommendation for people just starting their personal brand: start very small. If you develop a good reputation with five people, that goes mm -hmm. a lot further than getting. 10,000 Instagram followers that know just a little bit about you. For sure. If you have five people that really understand what you're about, they trust you, they understand where your strengths and weaknesses are, you got to understand those people know hundreds of people. And just five people that are on your corner goes way further than thousands that just know a little bit about you and follow you on a platform. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. And it's, I mean, it's, it's really big too. I think with this whole thing is like having tight niche people, they know a lot of people. So if you look at Facebook, yeah. everybody has like 2000 friends, give or take, right? 2000, 5,000, whatever you want to say it is. But if you have five of those people that know 2000 people, you can market to 10,000 people directly through that network of good service and delivering what you say you're going to do. Facts. And, and this is coming from a marketer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I specialize in paid media. Mm -hmm. But the number one most valuable uh, marketing, like, I don't know, whatever, marketing, uh, like, method, I guess you could say, is word of mouth marketing. Yeah. yeah. And I'd say so let, that... Let me repeat that for clarity <laughs> instead <laughs> of stumbling through it. The number one method of marketing is word of mouth marketing. It's better than any form of paid because you can always talk about yourself, right? And people always take that with a grain of salt because it's coming from you. Of course, you are going to talk well about yourself. You can pay other people to talk about you, which is a little better, but still you're paying them. And usually it's pretty obvious, but the most valuable thing is when people are talking about you in a good light for free and that's mm -hmm. earned rather than paid. No, for sure. And that's a big part of my business come up was all referrals a hundred percent. And it's still a big part of it. And it allows me to keep a really tight niche of people that I want to work with. And also by delivering those people and they have common friends around them of common interest, I'm going to find more and more of those. And as I continue to grow, they continue to grow on a value-based business and a value-based delivery. Um, back to reputation though, something that helped me build my reputation was really like, what is the word for this? Um, really like curated content. So high quality content on a rapid delivery. And that was getting me jobs left and right and left. And right. and then it is, it's tougher. And then back to what you're saying is it's tougher to scale, but as soon as I can find editors that I can train to fit my style, they fit and it was easier to get going, but it's, you know, it's hard to stay consistent with that model. And I haven't figured that out yet, but it's, you know, Keeping that rapid delivery is something in the market that I can deliver very easily. And then that higher quality, because normally if you get high quality 
with it takes a longer delivery in this market but if you if you flip it and you get that like longer delivery or um, quicker delivery is usually lower quality yeah oh that's almost always the case so yeah it's a great reputation to have and and it might be slower developing your business like that but in the long run it's better to go that route than churning out cheap content because you're going to have constant client turnover. If you yep. develop good reputation with each client, they're going to keep coming back. They're going to tell their friends mm -hmm. and it might take a little longer to, to develop it like that. But in the long run, you're going to have a better reputation. You're going to have people that keep coming back to you mm -hmm. and you're going to get more business and be more successful. And you and I are, we've talked about this before, but we're in a really good business model. If we make people more money, they come back to us to spend more money. So it's, it's endlessly the, the perfect business model of like integrity, you know, put that as another word behind a brand. Integrity is huge behind reputation. And if you have the integrity to work for results and for people to make more money, you're going to make more money too. I mean, it's a simple game of business. There's so much money out there. It's whether you can capture it, whether you can take it and whether you can circulate it. Yeah. We're in the needs business. You exactly. could have a business where you have a product or service that people may want, but mm -hmm. we're in a need. So people have to keep coming back to that, which is yep. a good thing for us. Man, something I want to talk about. We talked about this, but personal branding. The, the greatest example you, you brought to this was, uh, um, what's his name from the HBO show? Mark yeah. Wahlberg. Dude, the diversity of Mark Wahlberg and personal branding is absolutely insane. And when you think about this, this guy is a movie star who created his platform through being in movies. And at the beginning of it was a hip hop singer, right? <laughs> so then he became a movie star. Now, if you look at that show, and I forgot what it's called on HBO, but Wall, Wall Mark, Street. Wall Street, yeah. So Mark Wahlberg is a part of like Wahlbergers, um, his clothing company. He's doing acting. Like he's F45. He is Nutrition. literally- yeah, water he's, bottles mm -hmm. he's taken himself as an avatar who has built all this traction and knows his influential value and now he places it in things that he's invested in not only influencing but investing in to bring himself more and more passive income for simply being himself mark Wahlberg. like how cool yeah. is that like and and that's something that i'm working on building with my personal brand is like how can Chris Douglas start this company and get a hundred sales in its first week, whether it be clothing, whether it be a digital product, whether it be, you know, for a Canon USA, whatever it is, like, how can I build myself in all these spots and then place them to build products for my community? Yeah. And we could give Mark his flowers all day about the new stuff he's doing. But mm -hmm. the thing that people should take away from this is he focused on one lane to become extremely well known for a long, long time first. Mm -hmm. So entertainment industry, you know, singing and, and acting. He yeah. focused on that for decades. And now he's one of the biggest movie stars in the world, mm -hmm. right? From that point, the world's his oyster. But at first, he had to really be well known for one thing and develop good reputation. And then from it. that point, he could go wherever he wants. You dropped a big key there. And this, this is my own personal theory. So y'all can take it or you can leave it. But it's like, if you do something for 10 years, you become an expert at it. And once that 10 years is up, it's time to reapply it to something else. There's like a 10 year mountain. Like you're going up this mountain in 10 years. Once you scale it, there's a next one waiting. If you want to go, you can take all the skills from this mountain and start applying it to this. So personal branding should be that first 10 year mountain. Once you figure out who you are, what you're doing and how you serve others, then you can start applying that to every other mountain around you. And now you just built a community from scaling one thing for 10 years. And 10 years of focus and 10 years of hours and energy and knowledge is a lot. Like you become a super expert. I mean, it's like, it's literally like a life PhD in, in one area. Yeah, I like that. The 10, the 10,000 hour rule, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Maybe you add in a uh, focus on uh, helping 10 people, you know, <clears throat> just I'm, I mean, super narrow focused and it's very hard because there's opportunity mm -hmm. left and right but the more narrow focus you can be mm -hmm. and just keep your blinders on get really 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 good at one thing it's super underrated but that's where yeah. almost everybody starts that you see now that has like 10 different ventures they didn't yeah. start like that and if for instance too if if you and i were able to scale let's see what would that be three six seven eight figures so if we could scale <clears throat> 10 eight figure businesses 
I mean, that's that's insane to have in a 10 year because then it's like people will start coming to you because they want to hit that, you know? Yeah. They're like, all right, well, I've made a million. Now I want to hit 10 or I want to hit 20, you know? And it just puts yeah. it in such a you you have the proofs in the pudding because you did it 10 times. Not only did you did it once, like, you know, the first million is essentially the hardest to some people. And then the next 10 can be the you know difficulty on that. But being able to scale something 10 times creates so much value. Now you can start applying it to everything because you've done it. You've mastered it. Yeah. Yeah. The the skill set of mastery is a real thing. Like mm -hmm. if you're somebody that can put energy and focus into one thing, it could be anything. You can mm -hmm. apply that anywhere, honestly. <clears throat> yeah. And something big with personal branding too, I feel like is the mastering skill sets because skill sets create value. So for instance, like I do content, but what is content? So I can shoot videos. I can shoot photos. I can make graphics. I can um, record professional audio. I can report caught. I can record podcast. I can't talk on them. <laughs> I know lighting. Um, I'm starting to learn sales. I'm starting to learn copy. I'm starting to learn marketing. Like all of these are applicable, applicable skills that I can apply to any business or any model or any customer. And my most recent client came to me. And they had no idea what they were doing on sales and marketing. And I know very, very little, but I knew enough that they chose me as a content creator because I was like, well, here's a real simple sales model. We can apply to this and it'll give us more steam than what we had going into it of just shooting a video and hoping it worked. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's so true. Something I want to get into next. Let's go through the value of developing a personal brand, even when you have your own big company. Like okay. a lot of people think only focus on the company mm -hmm. and they lack developing their personal brand. For sure. But we have some really good examples of this. Gary Vee is obviously a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rob Deerdeck machine is another big one. They could just be focusing on their own, the actual business. Mm -hmm. But think of it like this. Businesses can come and go. Like, for Something sure. could come along that makes VaynerX completely obsolete. Mm -hmm. But Gary Vee has still developed his personal brand to be large enough and he, his integrity and ev everybody thinks really highly of him for the most part that yeah. he could still go do whatever he wants. So you can't just focus on one and let the other slack. Yep. And I think, well, even going back to like the Corey G model. So when Muscle Farm got hit with all their SEO allegations and issues, Corey G cut, started building something new, and he was able to not lose momentum because he had that personal branding of his own stuff and his own following. And it's it's literally that simple because once you attach yourself to an entity, if that entity fails, you're going to fail with it if you don't have something else that's, you know, interdependent or not just independent of this. If, you're, if your personal brand is dependent on something and that fails, that's not a very strong personal brand. It has to be able to stand alone and then anything that attaches to it grows with it. I think that's a really good way to look at it. Yeah, no, I agree. What methods digitally do you utilize or people should utilize so, to uh, grow your personal brand? Well, so I don't know. I don't know if this answers your question or this might be what you're, what you're hitting at, but Matt, my, uh, my mentor, Matt and I were talking about this yesterday. So he, he is, um, well, actually on my personal website, my idea is to not even have to use social media because I want to get everybody on my website. My mm -hmm. website is its own standalone. So if Instagram, Facebook, and Google all filled tomorrow, I would have a tight enough niche on my website and enough emails and people captured that I could directly send them emails. I could send text messages. I wouldn't need any of these social platforms to be able to continue to grow and build my business. People know where to find me and I have direct access to those people through direct messaging. So yeah, that's good. You, that's that's it, the long-term mm -hmm. thinking. But I, I wasn't is, even going there yet, but that that's actually really, really good advice. And it's and it's really, really simple too. If you have a tangible product that you can one apply to your personal brand you can start trading that for emails and phone numbers. And these emails and phone numbers, granted, could be outdated at some point, but you have direct access to what marketing actually applies to you. 
Um, so and it's really, really smart too. And if you can get less dependent on this technology and be more dependent on growing your brand, it is, it's so much more powerful because if the internet crashed tomorrow, how many businesses would fail? Oh man, so many are relying on, I mean, TikTok's a great example and that might mm -hmm. be banned. People's yeah. livelihoods are on one platform. Yeah, and it's as soon as you can pull that off and even like build your own server, build your own networks, like even even if you can figure out a way to get beyond like Kajabi and all these sites that are host, when you can be your own host and have everything so that if something crashes, like you're in a really strong point and you could be starting such a personal brand that others want to come on to it, i.e. Wix and all these platforms did that for themselves. And now all of us are building on it. They crashed and we're like, whoa. But if that crash happened and you have your own network and your own servers and all that stuff set up, like they do, psh, you're the next big brand. And you did it because you invested in your brand, not others' brands around you. Yeah, be your own platform. Mm -hmm. And that I can think go digitally and physically. If people know you on a personal level, you have ways to contact them. I you agree. Don't a, you don't need a website or a mm -hmm. social media. And that that's always a, that's a good topic. That's a good way to pivot into this too is like, I, I'm not sure how to do this yet because they both have their value, but I build digitally and physically. Yes. So you, you develop relationships as good as anybody I know to give oh, you a, thanks, little, man. a little bit of flowers. I mean, I've met so many people through you that I would have never met. So, but so I have, oh. I have, I love talk. So I have this, it's, it's almost like my, my, uh, my weird obsession is to like figure people out. So whenever I go out to shoots, whenever I go out to places, so if I'm on your shoot, um, if I'm out at a shoot and there's people sitting around, I love to talk to people because in my head, I've subconsciously started to figure them out and then I have to go validate it and test it. But along the way, I meet some really cool people and it's always aligned with who I am and you know what I'm working on or what I'm working towards. And it's just opened up so many doors. And I do the same thing on Instagram. Um, so somebody that I connected to was like Sam Kohler's old manager. And I just slid in his DM and was like, one day I was like, dude, your stuff's so dope. And I'm trying to work where I get him on a podcast for, you know, startup uh, full-time creators. And it's just stuff like that is like randomly reaching out to people can grow a personal brand so quick because you're, you're just taking a, a launch into a direction and who knows who they're connected to, what they know and how they can help you. Yeah, you, you and I are like on a lot of that as, as far as figuring people out. I love that. And a couple other things on it. That reminds me of a quote from, uh, shout out Jeff Finster, CEO of Everbowl, a previous guest on the Brad Dog Media Show. He's, one of his big pieces of advice is be interested, not interesting. If you put the focus on the other person, that develops the relationship a lot more and it helps build trust because you're focused on them rather than just spewing your stuff out there, right? Yep. And a side note to this, I was actually going to get to this in the first place as far as meth is the building a personal brand digitally. You're doing it in the case um, with Sam Kohler's guy. You want to actually develop relationships. So have real conversations, even if it's digitally. Focus on people one at a time. That's the true way to build a good network and a good personal brand. If you focus on the masses, you're probably not going to reach anybody. No, for sure. And that, that personal relationship is so important because it, I mean, if you focus on, I mean, Matt said this yesterday too, if you market to everyone, you get no one. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you're able to make these relationships, each relationship has those 2000 connections beyond it. Now back to the circling back to where we started, you make five really good connections. That's 10,000 people you have access to from five people. Now, if you talk to 10,000 people and ask them all, hey, how's your day going? And you never message them back. Zero. Exactly. Zero. And if I had five followers on Instagram, I would want five people that had like over a million people. So, I mean, I would want Gary V. I would want, you know, name five huge people. So instead of like your own 10,000 followers, what if you had access to 100 million people because you had five really influential people following you? Yeah, I like that. Man, um, so in your personal branding journey, where do you feel like you need to grow the most? 
man, I got to focus on me a little bit more. I've been creating so much for everybody around me, which is a part of the balance I'm trying to figure out. But I'm, I'm starting to work with somebody new now to help. Um, we're, we're solo creators helping each other build content with each other. And then we're actually working on building something together, putting our skills together, which is part of building my personal brand. And it's something that I've realized that I can't do alone and I'm going to need some other people. But I also have fine tuned my skill set of what I could bring. And I know that they're, you know, interdependent on it. So we're working on building this stuff, but I need content of my own now because I've seen this in the last year. I've been working so much on everybody else's stuff. My Instagram feed and stuff is looking a little sad. <laughs> What's funny is I think I know who you're referring to, but that's also what this is. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. And that's, that's what we're doing. And I'm seeing this, you know, how we're building stuff, but it's, it's like, um, where my mind used to be is very transactional. And it's like, we're not getting paid for this. So why would I do it? And then it's like, yeah. Oh, all that other stuff's pretty empty. You get paid for it. You spend the money and then you're still like, all right, I'm not fulfilled all the way yet. So really searching for that fulfilledness through building my own brand, but also working with brands to, you know, build it at the same time it's so hard <laughs> no it's fun i mean i need the collaboration too like it's mm -hmm. so boring just recording yourself i can't do it so For sure but honestly but these conversations build our personal it. brand so much this is like yeah. our marketing like why would we have to spend money when we both know skills like this and then these skills are applied in ways that are practical and then we're even using them when we're working with other people in the field to build our brand so it's cool yeah. um yeah. Yeah, no, for for what I'm building with my personal brand right now is so cool. I don't know if it's happened before. I, it, it probably has, but it's not a common thing yet. I'm so excited to get the ball rolling, but it's like building those steps to make sure that back to what you said, the reputation of when it built is built is very, very solid. Yeah, and I love the buy Chris. I mean, when you made that move, I thought that was a great decision because, I mean, so many people know you, but now... Mm -hmm even those that are like friends of friends or whatever, they have a place to come follow you. I'm like, Oh, it's Chris. Dude. No. And this, this is actually really good to circle back to because something I had issues with in the beginning of my journey was I did so much and I mastered so many skills. I endlessly had to keep creating different brands. Like you had you, me spirituality, which is like my spiritual side. Then I started to go into like Astro Hedge, which brought in astrology. And then I'm like, well, can those really fit? Spirituality is brought. Then I had photography. Then I had video. Then I had content creation. Then I was building websites. And I was like, I'm doing everything. And it's like, I don't want to just be like a production company. And then it was like, by Chris came in as like a branding, um, as like photography by Chris, videos by Chris. I can create segments, but it's still the personal brand of Chris. And then if you need content for your company, that's content creation by Chris but it allowed me to just simply build and acquire all these skills by personally branding myself and then having all these things around it that Chris does. But at the end of the day, it comes back to Chris. And my goal, I think I talked to you about this was, was to be the Chris in this world. Yeah. And everything's by Chris. Yeah. And how many people have branded themselves as Chris, you know, it was, it was a wide open door and it was like, dude, it'd be cool to be Chris is a common name, but what if you're known as the Chris, you know? No, that's so true. And it's, that reminds me of my personal brand name. Well, now LLC, right? It's, mm -hmm. so it's the business and the personal brand of uh, Brad Dog Media. So mm -hmm. what's funny is like that came from a nickname. So it's very personal, right? Yeah. But my name's Brady. <laughs> so you can imagine I get called Brad basically every day. Oh yeah. I remember a client who called you Brad, <laughs> Bradley. And I was like, Brady? <laughs> every day. Yep. Yeah. So I'll take it though. It's close enough. It, mm -hmm. As long as it sticks in people's minds, I'll take it. I would say, would you ever consider switching your branding at any point to like Brady Hester Media or um, Brady Hester? Probably not. I, I don't know. I I mean, I think our, our mindset's pretty similar. We're like, you're not just like, you could have could have done like, Chris Douglas videos, Chris Douglas mm -hmm. creative, which some of your stuff I, does say that, but so I did Chris Douglas Chris thought I out, like I, there's a little I more did, of a ring to it. Yeah, but I did Chris Douglas creative and I like the ring of it, but 
I looked online and somebody on LinkedIn already had Chris Douglas creative and he's a Chris Douglas is a photographer in Montana. Shout out to Chris Douglas for having the same name as me, but he, he did a very common thing too. And I was like, well, I like That's... the bike crit or I like the Chris Douglas creative. But when I was building Chris Douglas creative, I also was on the fence on buying Chris and then by Chris just made sense. And when I was building my stuff and rebranding, it was like, this is simple. It is straight to the point. And that's something that I really liked about Akati. Something that I, I've been playing with too is because I had the uh, the DBA of Akati or Akati production. I was thinking about playing because we built such an SEO with it, but it could be confusing to rebrand, but it was like Chris Akati, like change my last name mm -hmm. to a fictitious name of Akati because it's such a standout and then you're applying Chris to it. Yeah, that's something that, that I'm still that... I'm still teetering with since I have the DBA and I did that with Akati, but it's like, it's, and it's something that this is really important too, for personal brands is like five letter words or it's like short. So Apple, Intel, um, I don't know. <laughs> you can just name these brands. They're short, they're sweet, they're simple. And this is something, um, one of my mentors, Paul Sutton taught me was like, keep it short, but keep it descriptive. Yes. And, and unique, which mm -hmm. is kind of tough to pull off with the short words, but if you can make it short and unique. And maybe have some SEO purposes too. Like th those are the three main things, but you want sure. something to be able to stick out in somebody's mind, which I think works well with both of ours. Mm -hmm. Like nobody really has anything close to either of our brands. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything like Brad dog media around here. I mean, it's, it's so yeah. unique. And even, even like, for instance, like the dog branding, I mean, there's not German shepherd media or, you know, German shepherd, no, like, no. but it's, it's so it's so niche in its own pocket that it's so unique. It's such a novelty. And then if yeah. you hear this, you know, you threw if you threw your name in the pool of uh, media right now, like it stands out. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that's the goal. And but the challenge is with mine is SEO purposes. So I've had to throw in taglines like that use the word advertising and, and things mm -hmm. like that because you know, SEO wise, nobody's nobody's searching Brad Dog. That's not yeah, but but in, in the sense of building the education, once you create and teach, and I mean, so that, and that's just the hardest thing about personal branding is creating your own SEO. So for instance, Akati is the coolest brand to say this. Akati was a fictitious made up word of Acra and Audi, the two cars Spencer and I had, and we built, Spencer, I think actually was the one who came up with the name Akati. And I was like, do it, do it. That's cool. But then we had that. to. Yeah, so we okay. had to teach people and they keep calling it Ac Acadia, Akati. It like all these, and it's like, no, it's Akati, it's Akati, it's Akati. And I said this in a video shoot yesterday. You have to say the name of new ideas so many times to the point that it annoys the crap out of you. And once people are annoyed by hearing your name so much, you have officially branded it. Yeah, and it's it, when I go out on my stuff, I was like, "What's your name?" By Chris, by Chris, by Chris, by Chris, by Chris. Oh, you should check out my new brand. It's by Chris. Check out my website. By Chris. Hey, before we leave, make sure you get a card. Uh, here's by Chris is on the front. The foodies on the back. You know, just endlessly burning it into people's mind. Because if you if you were to search a Cadi right now on Google, you would see this SEO that we built, and it's only us. Nobody else has used the word Cadi. And we have the Google, Twitter, Instagram, and we built the circle, but we had to do the education on it. And then we even built it into Google by video production, Kansas City, colon, Akati production. So I used the keywords, video production, Kansas City on Google to capture it and then threw Akati production behind it to create brand awareness of what we did in Kansas City. Yeah, that's good stuff. And you brought up a good point with like, and this will annoy you as the person like crazy but keep in mind people aren't going to see everything you do so to them it might mm -hmm. only be the second third time you hear this but always repeat who you are and what you do very quickly and concisely so it sticks in people's minds mm -hmm. and just know that um you're going to say it thousands of times but people might only see it a few times but it might take four or five times for them to mm -hmm. register it and um recall it and reach out yeah, it's it's so weird because I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I was a kid who could sit in a class and an hour later you could be like, "What did you learn?" I'm like, "I have no idea." Or even a test day, test comes up and you got a question and you're like, "I know I learned this, but I don't know the answer." 
like people are the same way. Sometimes you have to say it four, five, six, seven, eight times. Like I've met, I have a joke. I've met the guy who does my audio editing. When I met him, I met him three times. Each time I was like, Hey, what's up, man? I'm Chris. And he goes, dude, you've, this is the second time you've met me. <laughs> and then it was the third time. And I'm like, dang, dude, I must've just been off on those days. But it, it's so crazy. That's when fun. you think about your brand though, you got to re-educate these people on who you are and what you do, who you are and what you do, because your goal is you're at a party. 10 people walk up or even 10 people see you walk in and they're like, Oh, Hey, there's Chris. He shoots videos that make you more money. Like yep. that's a hell of a thing to be known for. And then, Oh yeah, there's a cool. hundred people in the room who might need videos now. Yep. Yep. And it all starts with just a couple people that, that, you know, so start mm -hmm. small. Um, anything else to wrap up on personal branding topic or <clears throat> you want to touch on some projects you've worked on over the past week? I'd say a personal branding topic is don't be afraid to do a lot early and then see what sticks. So what I was advised to do early was like focus on one thing. Well, if you read my website by Chris.io, you'll see on it, I was focusing on me the whole time, but I didn't know it. I found me through video. I found me through photo. I found me through podcasting. I found me through all these modalities, spirituality, astrology, numerology, and then I created it to be Chris. But the yep. whole time I was confused because people like focus on one thing and I'm like, dude, I can't like I'm getting bored. But now I was able to prove them wrong and put it all together into one personal platform. That is me. And if you resonate with me, you're going to love this stuff because it's it's me. But it's so yep. hard to understand that to to a degree that is like you're not focusing on one thing, but it's like, no, I focused on me and I found me along the journey. Yeah, that's true. And that's good advice. And I think what I would recommend to people just from a branding point of view is like, in your case, you do a lot of things, but for the most part, you can put things under the umbrella of content creator. For sure. So what, people but, know you and they're like, oh, he's a creative. But if you flip yeah. that, I've even gone beyond content creator and have started leaning more towards digital creator. Yes, that's even more niche. Because, good. yeah, and I, I like the term digital creator because I can build websites. I can create marketing videos. I can just simply film you. I can record your podcast. Like I can do, I can create graphics. I can do anything digitally to create a brand. It's almost like digital brand creator is what I'm leaning towards and digital creator coach, like simple. Yep. yep. Digital that's creator great. is such a broad term that says I have a bunch of skills. What do you need? <laughs> But the thing is, I think in that case too, that, that helps for you is for businesses, they don't think of it that broad. They think of it as very niche. So mm -hmm. when they see that you come to mind, mm -hmm. which is good. So if you're somebody, you have a few skill sets, mm -hmm. either focus on showcasing one in particular that you're absolutely best at, or have it's... a good term to show people that is very concise. Because yeah. you can't have people thinking of too many things when it comes to you. And this, this is, and that, that's so important. So even though I do all this stuff, my main focus that people know me for is video production. And second is photography. Yep. And then beyond that, I land some spiritual stuff in the yoga, astrology, numerology space. And that's my third. So I have three main streams of income, but it's all built off of that. The main one is video by a landslide. The other two are almost hobbies that I get paid to have fun to do. Yep. But then when I can implement them all together, that's the full sell. That's the full send. Love it. Love it. Man, what have you been working on the past week? Anything interesting? So I shot some video. I'm creating marketable content for the um, it's furniture and design space. So there's this event going on in Kansas City in June. So I shot some video with some really cool influencers the other day in the space. And I kind of had an epiphany on this. Uh, I'd been um, been attracting the like interior design stuff on Instagram. Like I love it. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen what I've been reposting, but yeah, these houses cool. out in like the mountains and Bali, like they're just so cool. And then the other day, I was filming, you know, a marketing video with these people, and I was just like, "Well, that's crazy how I attracted to that space." So. <laughs> Um, got that coming up and then going to be in Denver, hopefully on Cinco de Mayo for a public speaker out there. Um, she's got a really cool personal brand. I'm excited to get to working on that stuff. Um, just finishing up a bunch of products. I'm almost on my rest phase, honestly. <laughs> I shot so many restaurants this past month that I'm just like, 
No, let's shift directions a little bit. And then really focusing on getting this content out there. That's something that I've really been lacking is getting this up. But it's like, dude, when you're editing all day, it's hard. So figuring out solutions, that's what I'm really working on, honestly, is figuring out solutions to bring people in what I'm doing, that it really isn't at a cost, it's more value and can grow. So I think that's the hardest thing in personal branding is like, if I spend $100 on this person, I got to make sure that it's bringing me $200 in. Or how can I spend money to create more opportunity? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard, but it's, <laughs> it's fun when you figure it out because then you're like, oh, it's easier than I thought. Yeah. I like that, man. For me over the past week, and it's, it's been a recurring theme over recent weeks. And this applies to our show here and also for clients. I'm leaning heavy into speeding up processes and making things more efficient. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is through different AI tools, automation tools. For instance, I have a tool that I'm testing right now and I, I do a ton of testing. I mean, I don't want to go all in on one platform. I test them all, see what's most efficient. Mm -hmm. And then I'm able to go all in. So um, I have a platform that I'm currently testing that repurposes this long form content into bite-sized clips that I can then grab and place on different social medias, yep. which is really valuable for personal branding. Mm -hmm. So going back to the topic of the day, I have an automated uh, subtitle generator. So I'm not typing in all these subtitles that you see on Instagram, yep. LinkedIn, wherever. So that's a big thing I'm doing at the moment. I'm trying not to waste time on things and waste my energy on tasks that could be automated. So let me ask you this. This is great for the, the viewers, I think, and myself, because I'm curious. How do you learn these new tools? So you're busy. You're an entrepreneur. So just to give you guys the background, Brady's a dad. He has a baby. He's an entrepreneur. He's a husband. He's got a house. Like He's got all this stuff going on. How do you take, and you have clients, and you're doing marketing. How do you figure out these new tools? Like, how do you even have the time to find these new tools, test these new tools and apply them in a way that's efficient and doesn't leave you like high and dry on energy? Yeah, that's a good question. And six hours of yard work this week, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yard work. Like, I don't have a yard demo. I got a floor to sweep. <laughs> no, man, that's a good question. Um, for this situation um, specifically, I purchased a course from Billy Jean is marketing and now oh, he's yeah. actually rebranding to Billy Jean is AI and virtual reality marketing. And he brought these ideas to me. You purchase a course. I'm still working on things throughout the day while I'm listening and gathering information that I can apply mm -hmm. to the future. So multitasking is a big thing. And, and I'm always listening to something. I want something in the background um, when I'm working anyway. So this, this that's is a knowledge cool. minus one thing you said. I don't think multitasking is is a good task, but <laughs> that's for a creative. No, but, yeah, yeah, no. It, but it has you a said place. you said the smartest thing, and Rich McCoy hits me on this too. Like you're purchasing courses to get information from people, and they sell these courses because they have information that they got from other people. It's literally a knowledge like cascade. Like these people learn. The millionaires learn from the billionaires. The millionaires teach the thousand dollar people. The thousand dollar teacher people teach the college people. Like it's just a cascade of information. And if you're willing to pay for it and and can integrate it and apply it to what you do, you can make money off of it. And it's essentially like yeah. I was just saying in this is like if I get a virtual assistant for a hundred bucks a month, they better be making me two hundred dollars a month. If I pay $2,000 for a course, I better make 5,000 off of that course's information when I apply it. But a lot of people go to these conventions and events and get these courses and they don't use them. They just master listening to them and not applying it. And that yes. is the most important mistake you can make is not applying it. And you can look at it in a couple of ways. You can look at it on this investment needs to make me this much money in mm -hmm. this situation this investment needs to save me this many hours of the month. Dude, that's it. I never even think about hours, but makes you more money because you have more mm -hmm. free time. I mean, I, I literally just thinking off the top of my head it, and it's taking a little more time. So I'm in the testing phase, but I know off the top of my head, I'll probably save 
I bet conservatively five hours a month from Which, the knowledge I learned from this. Dude, that, and that's, I was, I, I was thinking about thousands of dollars a month. That yeah. And, and I was thinking about this today is like where, and cause I'm, I mean, I was exhausted. I got up this morning. I was like, man, I'm a little gruff on this podcast, but I finally got some energy back, but it was, I was literally sitting here thinking like, where could I start bringing in people? How can I apply them? where it's not going to drain me, but bring me more time because with more free time, I have more energy. When I have more energy, more jobs attract in. And it's yeah. like, how can I You're free more creative, up that? Mm -hmm. You have more ideas, like the list goes on and on. But then even too, like, where can I, where can I build something that I'm working on building right now? And I'll put this out there. It's even like creating a once a week creator community on online calls. And it'd be cool if it was even local where we could meet up and go shoot. That's something that I'm working on too. But it's like, okay. You know, if I'm charging people a hundred bucks a month for a once a week call like this, where it's just like, Hey, what's everybody working on? Okay. And you're creating a community where somebody like me, okay. I know audio. A lot of these people don't know good audio. Like, Hey, you guys got to shoot like, dude, I'll, I'll work for 50 bucks an hour to help you out. You know, creating connections to help other creators, but it's also building my personal brand of like, Oh, you want to be a full-time creator? I can get you there. Here's a bunch of skill sets that it will take you you know, maybe a year to learn on YouTube that I'll teach you in a week and not only in a week, but I got this one-on-one -on -one thing and I can show you your mistake that you're doing right now. But through that, that was able to capture them through a hundred dollars a month, you know? And then it's like, by the way, there's other people in there. There's a lot of solo creators in Kansas city and there's this egoic fence blocking everybody from working with one another. But as soon as you learn how to lean on one another, like you said, like, and this guy that I'm working with now, we just shot some super dope pictures of each other. And it was like a spur of the moment thing. We even shot those pictures based off of a meeting that we were going to have that we didn't get to till later that night. But it's like, just like stuff like that, that, you know, you get, you get past that fence and you can just, it grows, it explodes. And then I was like, oh, that's a good explosion. Yeah. Good explosion. <laughs> I, I have some ideas for you. We're going to take offline. Okay. Perfect. Are we going to send this? Is, it, is this done? Yeah, man. I think we, I think we hit a, enough knowledge bombs today. We don't want to hit people with too many. They have to come back next week and learn some more. So we can't I think use so it all too. one week. Let's give us, let's, uh, let's practice our send off. So my name is Chris Douglas. Be sure to check out my content or book me at buychris.io. If you want videos that make you more money, or if you're a solo creator, want to be a full-time creator. And I'm Brady Hester from Brad, Brad Dog Media. Results only advertising. Come get it. Boom. Oh, 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 oh. Signing off. Oh, Sayonara. <laughs>